Good evening, and welcome to Spine Chilling Cinema. I am your host, Oliver, the Caretaker Collins, along with my lovely co-host, as you can tell, the Queen of Shenanigans, Alice, and her trusty as always, Cat Bubbles. Yes, Alice, you got to... Alice got to pick the feature film that we are showing tonight. Yes, indeed, Alice. And this one's a little bit, well, not a little bit, a lot a bit more sci-fi than what we normally show. From 1953, Planet Outlaws. I know you're excited for me to see this. I've never seen this film, Alice, because you know I'm not the biggest sci-fi fan. But this one stars Larry Buster Crab. Just call him Buster, you say, Alice. Forget about the Larry part. Okay. Well, anyways, Buster stars as Buck Rogers, which Buck Rogers is a very huge sci-fi character. Very, very well known, very, very celebrated. Yes, indeed, Alice. Why don't I like sci fi? It's, it's not that I don't like sci fi, there's just certain ones. We'll talk about this later, Alice. Yes, I am babbling, you are correct. <laughs> oh boy, Alice. <sighs> I don't know what to do. Oh, just play the movie? Okay, well with that, let us get to tonight's feature film. From 1953, Planet Outlaws. skies above us have come from time to time flaming disks and weird aerial phenomena. What are they? Whence have they come? Dr. Morris Aviot, one of the leading aerodynamicists in the world, stated that in his opinion they have originated elsewhere than the earth and that they are artificially controlled. Yes, they could be craft from another planet or a development of enemy power. But whatever they are, they continue to cause a great deal of concern and controversy. And when we are tempted to say that they are just a fiction writer's dream, we must remember that Jules Verne once dreamed of exploring the ocean depths. And in time, we had the submarine. Leonardo da Vinci also prophesied that someday man would fly like a bird. Today, flying is commonplace. Even the atom bomb thrilled readers of fiction magazines before it became a reality. In fact, the author was so realistic in his description of a terrifying destructive force that he was investigated by the FBI, who thought he had gotten secret information from government laboratories. But now man dreams of limitless power to propel us into outer space, where we can explore other worlds. So... While travel to another planet may seem highly imaginative to us today, in the year 2000, it may be commonplace. Here, for example, is a story of travel in the skies, visits to worlds in outer space, which may well be the blueprint of life to be lived in the years to come. Yes, 
sir. What is it, buddy? Brooks says we're going. We're trying to weather the storm. But it has lost altitude and crashes in the mountains of the polar region. Centuries later, men from a scouting ship discover the wreck. They're in a perfect state of preservation. Must have been frozen since the ship crashed. Body's almost natural temperature. Let's get them out of here. This gas is making me drowsy. Well, uh, take hold of us. I wonder how fast we're going. About a thousand miles an hour at least. Border Patrol calling operations office. Border Patrol calling operations office. Operations office. Golly, they sure got in quick. Put this call through the scientist general viewer. It is urgent. One moment. Go ahead. Captain Rankin speaking. We're approaching the city with two prisoners found in a dirigible. A dirigible? That's impossible. Such ships haven't been used since the 20th century. 20th century? What does he mean? I don't know. The ship was frozen on the tip of Bering Glacier. The prisoners were in a state of suspended animation when we found them. spaceship through the televi. How are you going to be in that dirigible? I was in command. We had taken off from New York and were making a transpolar flight around the world when... Well, what year was that? 1938. 1938? Impossible. Let me verify that. 1938. Uh-huh. There was such an expedition. Uh, your name, please. Buck Rogers. Uh, Lieutenant Rogers, officially. And yours, my boy? My name is George Wade. I'm usually called Buddy. Nibano Gas. Well, that explains it, then. Rankin, we are witnesses to a scientific miracle. By means of a gas discovered by Professor Morgan, these two people have remained in the state of suspended animation for 500 years. 500 years? That, that makes me old enough to be my own great-grandfather. But, Professor Hewer, that's impossible, sir. Dr. Hewer, Killer Kane has captured another of our pilots. yourself considerable discomfort by telling me where to find the entrance to the hidden city. I do not remember. I think I know a way to make you remember. Look into that instrument. Look into it. Those men were once pilots of Dr. Hewer's ships. Now they are living robots. Men robbed of all willpower while they wear the helmets I had designed for them. Shall I have you measured for a robot's helmet? Or will you tell me where the entrance to the hidden city is? I do not remember. Take him away. I don't understand, sir. Who is this man called Killer Kane? He is the result of the stupidity of the men of your century. You failed to stamp out lawlessness, and in the end, the criminal became stronger than the law. Racketeers, you call them. 
Today they rule the world as cruelly as they ruled their gangs in your day. Well, isn't there any chance of help from an outside source? Well, only from men on some other planet. Another planet? Well, that doesn't sound very hopeful. It could be. But our spaceships seem unable to, to slip through Kane's air blockade. We've lost five thus far trying it. You mean you actually have ships that can travel from planet to planet? Of course. But if you have ships that can travel that far... You know, I think I know a way of running that blockade. Well, if you have any plans, I'll read to listen to them. But to me, it seems much hopeless. Am I right, Marshal Craig? In assuming that you can operate a plane from the ground at such a distance, mind you, by means of radio? That's correct, Rogers. Well, then, sir, why don't you send up such a ship as a decoy? While Kane's patrol is following it, I can slip through in a spaceship and get help from Saturn. We've already lost too many ships and crews. We can't afford to try it. It seems to me you can't afford not to try it, sir. Rogers is right, Marshal. Unless we get help from Saturn, our cause is lost. Very well, sir. You're in charge. Thank you very much. Lieutenant Deering, you will go with Rogers to establish a means of communication with Saturn. If you do get through to that planet. calling 60,000 foot patrol. Charlie, our course directly for Saturn now, Buck. May as well. They both look. They fell for it, all right. Hi, that spaceship with no one in it. We can direct all the aircraft from the control room until they reach the outer atmosphere. I don't think we'll run into any more trouble. Why don't you take a nap, Wilma? I'll, I'll take the controls. Thanks very much. Looks like a gray wall. That's the outer atmosphere of Saturn, buddy. It's ten times denser than the air around the Earth. What was that? I don't know. Two of Killer Kane's ships coming up fast behind us. Charge your speed to one half. If we do, they'll get away from us. Don't worry about that. They'll either have to slow down or go up in smoke. We have that atmosphere at this rate of speed. The pressure will bring us to our pit.
desolate looking place. Huh? Stand by the retarding rockets. Signal the other ship if we're going down. Yes, sir. Lieutenant Deering calling the Sinus General of Earth. Air Control Headquarters in the heat. Go ahead, Lieutenant Deering. Give me the Sinus General at once, please. Wilma, this is Dr. Hewer. Are you safe? Our outer atmosphere patrol reported two of Killer Kane's spaceships took off after you. They did. Shot down our ship, but we got away with our gravity belt. Saturn is like this, you can have it. Right. Rex over that way. Tell the men on the other ship to stand guard. Look, I just saw one of Killer Kane's men go behind those rocks. Are you sure? Positive. They must have landed their ship and are following to capture us. Maybe we can beat them at their own game. Follow me. Don't let them guess we know they're trailing us. Stop where you are. Hand me that gun. Give it to me. There's nothing else you can do, woman. All right, then. Let's get them back to the spaceship. Patton, check the rockets on the other ship. Do not move, any of you. Drop your weapons. You are from the Earth, are you not? Uh, yes, we came here to make a treaty. It would be useless to explain to me. I am only a soldier acting under orders. Two of you stay and guard the ship. The other two bring the others after me. Alice. What did you do? Did you shrink the skull? Oh, no, you just changed it to with a, a little one. Why did you do that? <sighs> Alice says, I need to sit and pay attention and watch the film, not go walking around. Well, I had things to do. I'm sorry. Well, that's what I get, she says. Oh, what else could be going on? What other shenanigans could you do? You, you'd think it was Friday the 13th or something. Yeah, I know. Friday the 13th was last week. And why wasn't I around? Ha! I'm smarter than that. Friday the 13th, don't be around, Alice, unless you just want to get pranked until... You, you would think that Friday the 13th is a week long, how much she pranks during that glorious day, Friday the 13th. I'm glad it is not today, and it was last week. Alice, Alice. But Alice, this film, I... I don't know, Alice. I don't know. I know it's too early to give my ranking, but I don't know. What what am I what don't I know about it? Well, there's th th some editing problems. It seems like it's cutting all over the place. Oh, okay. Well, knowing that, I give it a little bit more I give it a little bit more leeway. Alice just told me, informed me, I should say that this movie, Planet Outlaws from 1953, is actually an edited version of the serial Buck, Buck Rogers from 1939. Well, that makes sense then, Alice. Yes, I know you are smart. No, you are not the smartest co-host. The smartest host. I'm the host. Anyway. Anyway. 
But Alice, I have a little uh, tidbit about Mr. Um, Buster Crab. Did you know, you know everything, no, I don't know if you know this one, that Buster, in 1932, won a gold medal for the 400 meter freestyle swimming in the 1932 Summer Olympics. You did not know that. Oh, you don't really care for sports, that's why, other than cricket. Oh, I'm... <laughs> you do know it's not Friday the 13th. That was last week. Yes, but I wasn't around, so you have to do shenanigans now. Oh, lovely, lovely, lovely. Oh, boy. Now Alice is going on and on about how Buck Rogers is so handsome and this and that. You know what? With that, we are going to go back to the film from 1953, Planet Outlaws. Zero out of prisoners you wanted me to bring in, sir. I am Alda, director of the Council of the Wise. I have had you brought here to explain your presence on Saturn. You may speak. We came here as envoys. Seeking an alliance with you people of Saturn. And why do you desire such an alliance? To escape the journey of a man called Killer Cain, who's imposed his rule on all but a handful of us. A man who governs by brute force. That's not true. The leader Cain is a just man. He rules with the consent of all save a few revolutionaries. Revolutionaries? Is it true that you are revolutionaries? In a sense, I suppose we are. If it's revolutionary to protest against brutality. I have heard enough. Rebels or not, I see through them all into prison. Saturn wants no contact with outside planets. But in this age of science, we cannot hope to isolate ourselves from the rest of the universe. But we are dedicated to peace and have no patience with rebels. Then why not form an alliance with our government and help us stamp out this rebellion? The point is well made. We'll imprison the revolutionaries and treat with the envoys of the leader, Cain. Then I jump tail and run for the sliding panel. But we can't escape the guards. We'll have to try. Throw the others in prison. One wrong move from any of you. You lead a new council of the wise. Seize him! Ships are over there. What about those awful Zug guards? Take care of them with this gun. Take the controls, Buck. I'll find the starting rocket. Right. Drop down the door, buddy. See if all the portholes are closed. No Saturnian craft, Doctor. It's one of Killer Kane's spaceships. Impossible. I know that type of ship too well to be mistaken. 
Have you tried to contact them on our wavelength? As a matter of fact, I have. Well, we must do so at once. There's a spaceship at 274.6. Contact at once on our wavelength. Yes, sir. Air Marshal calling spaceship on 274.6. Guys, Buck, I guess we'll be landing pretty soon, won't we? That's right. The radio is working so we can contact Dr. Hugh. Well, that isn't necessary. I know the secret entrance to the hidden city. We'd better start using our retarding pressure. Air Marshal calling spaceship on 274.6. I'm sorry, sir, there's no contact. That proves it, Doctor. It is a cane ship. But I can't understand. There's only one answer, Doctor. Boomer and Rogers must have betrayed a secret entrance to the city. There's the signal to open the gates. What shall I do, sir? Open them and stand by to close them at my command. Yes, sir. They got a signal. They're in the lock now, sir. Close the gates, folks, and put all the power of the dynamo behind them. You're the jam! Have it lowered with crate. I want to examine this. Yes, sir. Buddy! Buddy! Get that gravity belt! We still have a chance. Quick! Quick! Through that opening! How did you get here? The air marshal ordered me to arrest anyone who escaped from the wrecked ship, sir. You mean you were in that spaceship? Yes, sir. But it's one of Killer Kane's spaceships. That's why I ordered it destroyed. The only way we could escape from Saturn, sir, after the man of that planet turned against us. We'd better discuss this in my office. Report back to the officer of the day, Lieutenant. Oh. That also is true, sir. It is the duty of every honest government to aid in the suppression of anarchy wherever found. To that end, we have signed this promise of support. Then, Stalin, you will visit the Earth with Captain Lasker. Verify his story. If it is true, you will present this treaty to the leader Kane for his signature. Saturn will abide by your decision. Spaceship, be ready to leave, Captain. It is ready now, and I suggest we start at once. I thank you in our leader's name for your faith in us, for your promised help. This is Prince Talon, Lieutenant Patton. We're leaving for Earth immediately. Did everything work out as you hoped? I think our troubles with Dr. Hsu are about over. Have you identified the ship, Hsu? Beyond question, it's a killer cane ship. May I look, sir? Oh, why, of course. Uh, it's a sister ship to the one we came back from Saturn in. Then that means that Killer Kane's men have probably completed their mission on Saturn. If we only knew if they made the alliance with the Saturnians. Well, haven't we got any spies working with the Killer Kane people? Well, we've tried it. But every one of them has been captured and put into Kane's robot battalion. So what was done with this stuff taken from the wrecked spaceship? Dr. Hewer has the instruments. The rest of the equipment was put in military storage. Then you still have the uniforms taken from the crew's quarters? Are you suggesting that we use those uniforms to get a spy into Killer Kane's camp? Yes, sir. And I'd like to volunteer for the detail. Oh, you'd only be captured and spend the rest of your days in Kane's robot battalion. I'm afraid that you're of more value to us in the air, Roger. But, Marshal Craig, if I can get the information concerning the Saturnian Treaty, sir, may mean the success of our campaign. He's right, Hewer. You haven't a chance in a thousand. But if you're willing to risk it, I can't afford to refuse the offer. Thank you very much, sir. Which one of those buildings is Killer Kane's? That big one, with the terraces. I'll circle it in a minute. Switch it to gravity belts and prepare to bail out. Right on. So long, Lincoln. 
Good luck, Lieutenant. I sent for you because my patience is about at an end. You have all read the treaty which our good friend Prince Talon has brought from our sister planet Saturn. It pleases me. Buddy, get a gravity belt from the rack we just passed. Are there any objections from the councils? Then I submit it to you for your signatures. No one will sign that treaty, Kay. I'll take it. Cards! How did you get in here? We were here when you and Prince Talon entered the room. It's Buck Rogers. Who is Buck Rogers? He's a hidden city American who came to Saturn. Talon, you're not going to sign this treaty until I've had a chance to show you just why this man is called Kira Kane. Don't be a fool, Rogers. If you persist in this folly, my men will kill you. Not until I've shown Prince Talon just what you do with your prisoners, Kane. Get to the televite. Go on, move. Prince Talon, you go with me. Buddy, keep these consoles covered. Get the dynamo rooms. I said the dynamo room, Kane. See for yourself, Prince Stellan. Those steel caps they're wearing are amnesia helmets, an invention of Kane's scientists to rob men of their minds and their will. But this is incredible. Nevertheless, Talon, it's true. Now do you know why we are fighting this man? Who is your leader? I shall be glad to treat with him. That's a very handsome gesture, Prince Talon. But how do you and Rogers plan to leave my city? You will be arrested by my guards before you can leave the palace. I have taken care of that, King. Buddy, toss me that gravity belt. The gravity belt? I don't understand. It's a device we use here on Earth. It's really an outgrowth of the old parachute. Put it on, Taylor. Oh, I see. Buddy. Out the window you go, you two. Well, how about you, Buck? Never mind about me. Come on, over here, quick. Get the cars, you fools! If they get away, I'll put every man of you in the room and pretend it! the terrace. If necessary, bring in some of the ships from the outer atmosphere patrol and assign them to cover Kane City. Rogers must be given all possible help. Nothing new to Rogers. I'm sorry, Doctor, not a word. It looks bad. Marshal Craig, we can't just stand here and do nothing. Maybe if we... Lieutenant Deering, you forget where you are. Now, it's possible that Rogers has escaped. He may be somewhere in the open country between here and Kane City. I suggest we send out a scout patrol to look for him. Do so at once, Clark. Lieutenant Deering. Yes, sir. You're a member of the 7th Pursuit, aren't you? Yes, sir. Order out the squadron. Cover all of the open country between here and Kane City. Flying at a low altitude. I'll have your complete flying order sent to the airport. That is all. Yes, sir. She'll find Buck Rogers if anybody can. Welcome back. And Alice, 
the villain in this film, Killer Kane, it sounds more like a wrestler's name, Killer Kane. I'm not blaming you, Alice. You didn't make this film. But he, he seems kind of like one of those villains that just like gives out order, orders and doesn't really do much. You know, I mean, at least like Darth Vader, for instance, when, you know, he'd give out orders, but if somebody didn't do something right, he would, you know, do the force choke or he knew how to use a lightsaber, you know, this guy just kind of seems like a pushover. Yes, I know the whole movie is should be more about Buck Rogers because he's so handsome. <clears throat> you want to know why? Alice wants to know why. I'm not a big fan of sci-fi. I wouldn't say it's that, Alice. It's more... Uh, the outer space stuff isn't really that big for me. Oh, you love outer space. And you believe that we should be way farther in technology in outer space and be able to go to planet to planet already by now. Not gonna lie, I think the narrator even said by the year 2000, maybe. And well, it's past that. So I, I give you that, Alice, but back to what I was saying. You're getting me off tangent. No, it's not easy to make me get off tangent. Oh, you. Anyways, the sci-fi that I'm kind of into is more like, let's say, uh, The Matrix, um, Time Bandits. Oh, that's more fantasy, you say, Time Bandits. And you weren't that big of a fan of that one. You know, there's people out there saying, Alice, that they're surprised we're not married. No, that doesn't mean we should get married. I'm saying there's people out there that think that we are because we argue all the time, they say. You want their names and numbers because you are going to take care of them. <sighs> oh, Alice, Alice, Alice. <sighs> but I do admit it would be cool if we could go to different planets, um, you know, not just to visit, but you know, I mean, the world is getting pretty populated and maybe to help the earth survive of, you know, having some people, well, probably more than some people, but have people live on another planet, you know, would help. I don't know, I am not a scientist. You can say that again, Alice says. Wow. Wow. Anyways, wow, Alice. <laughs> wow. <sighs> but yes, I don't know. It, you know, Killer Kane is going to be siding with um, the, the people of Saturn. Oh, and then, then Earth is really going to be hurting. I don't know. I guess we'll we'll find out. This this movie's getting better, Alice. I'll give it that. But I think we should get back to it, and we'll see if it gets better. Oh, it already is better. Oh boy! From 1953, Planet Outlaw.
speaking. Let me speak to the leader. Calling the leader. Calling the leader. Calling the leader. This is the leader. I have you to report. The fugitives have escaped in your patrol ship, sir. Escaped? In my ship? You blackheads! I'll send every one of you to the robot battalion. Report to the guard captain under arrest. Yes, sir. The leader's airport. The spies have escaped in my private patrol ship. Send the squadron after them and shoot them down. Warn all outposts. If they break through to the open country, we'll never get them. And you are the men I made counselors of Earth. I would be better served by this Buck Rogers who walked through your men as if they were children. I noticed you didn't capture Rogers when he was in this very room. Franco, I warn you. Another statement like that and you will go before the firing squad. And so will all of you if you fail me again. Now get out! To your hidden city, Colonel Rogers. Oh, about 600 miles. I wouldn't call old Dr. Hugh exactly handsome, but I sure would give a lot to see his face right now. <laughs> I bet you would, buddy. Tell and I should have returned this treaty to you after I took it from Killer King. I'd forgotten about it in the excitement. Someday you must return to the planet Saturn with me and receive the thanks of people for preventing the alliance with Kane. I'd rather you thank me by giving us your planet support. And smashing Killer Kane's armies. Hey, Buck, here comes a whole squadron at us. Is it a Kane squadron? No. No, it's one of our own from the hidden city. Calling Lieutenant Deering. This is Lieutenant Deering. Go ahead, please. It's a Killer Kane ship approaching beneath us about 6,000. Pull out a formation and bring it down before you communicate with headquarters. Yes, sir. Hey, Buck, one of them's diving at us. I can't... Un yes, I can. This is Killer Kane's ship. They think we're an enemy. Just below it. Fire a blast into the tail surface as I level out. They're going to shoot us down. The only thing we can do is set down and let them see who we are. I might have saw Killer Kane's ship give up so easily. Hit. Uh, that makes it unanimous, Wilma. Who is this? One of Killer Kane's men? I know. He's the best friend we have, Randy. It's Prince Talon, envoy from the planet Saturn. He's going to help us in our fight against Killer Kane. Oh, I'm very sorry, sir. I didn't understand. Well, that's an old custom we have here. It's a sign of friendship, like this, Talon. That's right. Wilma, report back to your squadron. Advise your commander what happened. Tell him we'll follow you back to the hidden city and gain ship. Oh, I think I will. Good. He's been taken care of, sir. Dr. Heuer, this is Prince Talon, envoy from the planet Saturn. Dr. Heuer is our scientist general. And Air Marshal Craig, our operations chief. Prince Talon? Prince Talon, you bring new hope to a beleaguered race. If it had not been for Colonel Rogers, I think your enemy would have tricked me into fighting you instead of helping you. I am authorized to sign this treaty, pledging our support to your cause. It would be more honest to let see our people and decide whether we are worthy of your help. Lieutenant Deering, it would be well to contact the planet Saturn. Yes, sir. Advisor, we have signed a treaty with Prince Talon, that they are at war with Killer Kane. Yes, sir. 
squadron was upon us before we could bomb Rogers and Talon again. So you allowed Rogers to escape with Talon to the hidden city? We could not help ourselves. You see, we were spies. If Talon pledges the aid of Saturn to Dr. Hewer, they will drive us from the face of the earth. We brought it on ourselves. You should have taken my advice. Quick, when we had it on. Since you are so clever, you shall take a spaceship to Saturn and arrange a treaty with her people before Talon has time to report back. I refuse. I will not be a tool for your insane ambitions. I am in command here, Krenko. Take him away to the robot battalion where he can forget his grievances. You can't send me there, Kane. You can. I'll head your commission to Saturn. I'll head your commission to Saturn. But don't send me to Robert Kane. No! Anything to say, say it now, Krenko. When this helmet is in place, you'll never think nor speak again. You can tell Kane that I'll escape. I'll live to see the day that his... One more dead mine in the ranks of the leader's enemies. I trust no others share the feelings of the late Counselor Krinko. Being a kindly ruler, I shall give you a chance to redeem yourself. Thank you, sir. Fly a spaceship to Saturn and arrange the treaty that Krenko refused to try. If you succeed, there is an empty chair at my council table. The Earth calling the planet Saturn. I'm afraid it's useless, Doctor. Apparently, our receiving sets are not in tune with your projectors. In that event, you'll have to return to Saturn by spaceship. I doubt whether such a trip is possible. Air controls. Hope reports from our outer atmosphere observatory. Report just received, sir. Killer Kane has doubled all air patrols in that stratum. A spaceship wouldn't have a chance. I am not quite so sure about that, Craig. Not sure? You know what's happened to all our ships to try to break through. Yes, but I've been working on a little experiment that may help us. What kind of an experiment? Well, I didn't mean to show it until I had perfected it, but uh, even as it is, it may serve our purpose. Just step over to this window. I watch the ship nearest you. Stand well back. I don't want to experiment on you. Do you know anything about this? I knew he was working on something, but he wouldn't say what it was. Now keep an eye on that ship. I don't say anything strange about it. What's it supposed to do, Doctor? Blow up or something? Why, it's disappearing in the thin air. Oh, don't get in the ray. Might do the same thing to you. Wouldn't harm you very much, but it may take some time to bring you back to visibility. But I don't see how that would help, sir. If you've destroyed the ship... Oh, but I haven't. The ship is still there, but you can't see it. I have discovered a ray which reduces all opaque matter to transparency, perfect as the ether itself. Unfortunately, I can hold it only for a matter of a few minutes. Ten at most. And the ray won't harm anybody inside the ship? Not at all. Well, then the problem's solved. And the sooner we start, the better. Yes. They'll need a navigator, said. Oh, yes, so they will. You will report to the air control room and make ready for immediate flight. Yes, sir. Well, if I have to take you with me, we'll get to the control room. Doctor? Have the rockets loaded into a spaceship for immediate takeoff. Yes, sir. Rocket laboratory. This is the air control office. Have spaceship LC9 loaded immediately for takeoff.
firing rockets. Make sure you put them in the lower racks with the firing end forward. You'll be pretty much on your own when you reach Saturn. We get through Kane's blockade. All depends on Dr. Hewitt, Helen. I'll radio him as soon as we spot any of the Kane's ships. Buck, there they are, right above us. Dr. Hewitt? Dr. Hewitt? Buck Rogers calling. This is Dr. Hewitt. Go ahead, Buck. We spotted the Kane ship, sir. They're directly above us. Better start your dissolve array. I turn it on immediately, Buck. A hidden city ship rising, sir. Trying to run out blockade. Head straight for it. Man the ray guns. Hold your fire and I'll give the order. Perfectly, Doctor. Look, it's disappearing into thin air. It's vanished. Attention, all patrol ships. The hidden city spaceship has just run our blockade. Spread out, circle and try to locate it. You all right, Tom? Yes. You, Wilma? Fine, Doctor. Stand by your rocket controls. Here we are back to normal again. <laughs> With better relief. A strange sensation being up here in a ship you couldn't see. Now, the main thing is we got through Killer Kane's blockade. Now the only thing left between us and Saturn is <laughs> space. Welcome back, and I hope you are enjoying tonight's feature from 1953, Planet Outlaws. And if you enjoy the show Spy and Chilling Cinema, we do have a Facebook page. You can just go to Facebook and do a search for Spy and Chilling Cinema. You'll see a lovely picture of myself with Alice. I even think Bubbles kind of photobombed the picture. But anyways, give us a like if you like the show, comment, suggestions. Do you want more scary movies? Or do you want more sci-fi? Let us know. Oh, really, Alice? I did not know that. Hmm. I guess Mr. Buster Crab was also... Flash Gordon, and he also played Tarzan. I believe that is the only actor to have played Buck Rogers, Flash Gordon, and Tarzan. He really swings around. Not a funny joke, Alice says. That was horrible. Downright stank, you say. Okay, well... Listen here, comedian Alice, but well, <laughs> wow. In Planet Outlaws, you saw where Killer Kane had or has these robot type helmets that once he puts that on you well he doesn't even put it on you really it's he tells people to yeah i know he does that one time but puts it on somebody's head and then all of a sudden they have they don't know who they are they can't speak they just pretty much are almost like zombies robot zombies 
Alex says, why don't they make a robot zombies movie? I'm sure there is. I'm sure there is somewhere, Alice. I'm sure there is. Well, we should show it. Well, I'll leave that up to you to find out about that type of movie. Oh, you'd want to put that metal helmet on me, and then you could take over the show and have sci-fi all the time. Alice, there are people that watch the show, even though they're super fans of you, I don't think they want sci-fi all the time. Oh, I don't know your fans like you know your fans. Well, I guess that's true, but if sci-fi all the time, I can't even watch scary movies all the time. Gotta have a little bit of, you know, maybe throw in a comedy, throw in this, you know. You don't eat the same thing every day, right? That's different. Oh, wow. But we are to the home stretch. The home stretch, Alice. And I got to say, the movie's turning around a little bit for me. You know, the editing, but you said it's all edited from 1939 to 1953. So I guess you kind of got to give it a break on that. But um, you are right, Buster is pretty much carrying this film. Alice says that's because he's a superhero. Mm -hmm. He is Buck Rogers. I am not going to argue that. So. Oh, he's dreamy, Alice says. Oh, here we go again. Is... is Buck Rogers more dreamy than Bella Lugosi? That's not a fair question. Oh boy. Anyways, let us get back to this feature film and see how it ends. I am I'm not dying to see how it ends, but I am curious to see how this ends. Will Buck Rogers fail or will he be the hero? We shall see. So let us return to the film. Planet Outlaws. Looks like the trouble is over. And now, sir, Lieutenant Turing and I must return to the Earth immediately. So I realize the need for your haste. I will see you to your spaceship. Thank you, Talon. Goodbye, sir. Air control room calling the scientist general. Air control room calling the scientist general. Doctor Hewitt, it's Buck Rogers. Yes, Buck. Is everything all right? Yes, sir. Roman and I are taking off immediately, sir, but before we do, we wanted to check with you about the dissolve array. It's still imperfect. But we can count on it to make you invisible long enough to slip through K's air block, eh? That's fine, Doctor. Then as soon as we near the Earth, we'll advise you. As long as Doctor here is ready for you, there is nothing to keep you here any longer. No, Talon. We'll get in touch with you on the space radio as soon as we decide the best way to rid the Earth of Killer Kane and his outlaw army. The best of luck to you. Thank you, Talon. Try the starting rocket, Wilma. Have a formal minute, sign 
to check over the dissolver ray apparatus and once and bring it here. Colonel Rogers is on his way back from Stanton, and we'll need to bring him through the blockade. Yes, sir. Preparing another expedition to force the Saturnians to sign a treaty with us. This time I shall. This is the leader. Sir, an unidentified spaceship has been reported returning from Saturn. Notify the commander of the Outer Atmosphere Patrol and keep me closely informed. Report an unidentified spaceship returning from Saturn. Perhaps Laska has been successful after all. We'll make no move until we learn more. Adjourn. Patrol 62, calling Patrol 62. This is Patrol 62. This is Commander White. Take your patrol to the 120,000 foot level. Watch for a spaceship returning from Saturn. If it is an enemy craft, bring it down. Yes, sir. 120,000 foot level. Yes, sir. Wilma, better give me a few retarding rockets. Soon be in the outer atmosphere. All right. Dr. Ewer. Dr. Ewer. We're approaching the 160,000 foot level, sir. Stand by with your dissolve array. We're all set, Buck. Just give the word. Buck, there's a cane patrol squadron coming up fast beneath us. Dr. Hewer, give us a ring now, sir. One of Kane's patrol squadrons has spotted us. There she is. Squadron 62, spaceship sighted. Fly above it and use attack formation nine. Can't be fog at this level. That ship seems to be disappearing. It's working perfectly, Craig. Certainly. Oh, Lacey, check the machinery on this ship. The Air Marshal will want all the information he can get on it. Yes, sir. about the Saturnian Treaty? By all means, Colonel. The rulers of the planet Saturn are with us in our fight against Killer Kane, sir. They're going to send spaceships as soon as we're ready to attack. With this support, we cannot lose. We must call a meeting of the War Council at once. Yes. I'll take over now. Uh, you're early. Come in, 
was anxious to find out what's been happening. Well, the war minister's been in there with Craig since 9 o'clock. Something's up. Yeah. Oh, good night. Good night. Get in that room. Calling the leader king, calling the leader. Calling the leader king, calling the leader. Calling the leader king, calling the leader. This is the leader king. Sir, this is Carson of your private patrol ship. I'm on a hidden city air control. Hidden city? Do you know where the secret entrance is? Yes, sir. It's in the Valley 100 on our maps. The gates are open now. I'll notify the outer atmosphere patrol at once. The leader, calling Commander White. This is Commander White, sir. The secret entrance to the hidden city is in Valley 100. The gates are open. Be there with your squadron and destroy the city. It shall be done, sir. Contact. All ships, attention all ships. Objective Valley 100 at full throttle. We'll see you in the morning. Good night, Marshal. Good night, Colonel. Good night, You know, Marshal Craig, I still believe that every day we delay our attack on Killer Kane is a day lost. I'm inclined to agree with you, Colonel. We'll discuss it again at the War Council tomorrow. Yes, sir. Excuse me a moment. Any messages for me? No, sir. Where's the other operator? I don't know, sir. He left a few minutes ago. Well, he'll go back to straight duty for this. The fools left the gates open. Don't touch that switch. King Spy. That's right. That's brought here by Colonel Rogers himself. Oh, so you stored away in that patrol ship, did you? I should have had sense enough to search it. You won't have to worry long about that, Colonel. There's a full squadron of the leader's planes on the way here now. That squadron will be here any minute now. Uh, the airport guards will blast them to pieces before they land. I think you're mistaken. chances to attack Killer Kane immediately. He now knows the secret entrance to our city 
and every hour we delay weakens our chances. I suggest, sir, that we contact our allies on Saturn immediately and ask their support. I said you might wait for Colonel Rogers, but no listening. Then it is the unanimous vote of this war council that we communicate with Saturn immediately, ask their promised support, and attack King's stronghold at once. We stand adjourned. You voiced my sentiments exactly. We radio Saturn from my laboratory. Yes, sir. Hey, Bud, can I come along? No, of course you can, old Tammy. Doctor, is it to be war? Yes, we must communicate with Saturn at once. But how can we hope to defeat King with so vast a force at his disposal? With Saturn's help, Wilma, we stand better than an even chance. Is the equipment in order? Yes, sir. It was checked only this morning. Is this is a catastrophe. The receiving set you left off Saturn is dead. We can't communicate with it. Maybe it's only turned off, sir. The set is dead. If there were any life at all, that lamp would flicker. We said it burning steadily. We've got to get into communication with them. There's nothing I can do, Marshal. I've made two trips there already, sir. Looks like I'm going to have to make a third. You wouldn't stand a chance. After last night, the outer atmosphere would be swarming with Kane patrol ships. You couldn't make it in one of our ships. But I don't mean to take one of our own ships, sir. I'm going to take one of the captured Kane patrol ships. Patrol ship? They're not built for space journeys. I'm sorry, sir. I hadn't thought of that. I can fix that. I can have my technicians install extra rocket racks. You won't have a comfortable journey, but you'll get there. Stop in the work, sir. I'll be ready to take off as soon as the ship is in order. Well, but, Doctor, you don't mean to go alone. I'm afraid so, Wilma. I daren't take a single defender from the city. But your arm. Ah, the arm's all right. Now, don't you worry about it. See you before I go. So long, buddy. Oh, I'll be seeing you, Bert. Boys. Uh, I guess it's about time to take off. Uh, I wish I'd seen Buddy. He's probably very busy at something or other. Yes, sir. Well, I'm sorry you're not making this trip. So am I, Bob. We'll be expecting you back soon. Dr. Hewer, I'll keep in constant communication with you, sir. Good. Goodbye. 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 Ship ZN-1 en route to headquarters with urgent information. Squadron commander calling all patrol ships. General orders. ZN-1 is an extra detail en route to Leader King's headquarters. Okay, buddy. You can come out any time you want now. How did you know I was in there? Well, when you're trying to hide out from somebody, be careful when you peek around corners. Oh, hi, kid. You saw me in the observation room. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Say, Bucky, you're not really going to Kane's headquarters, are you? Yeah, I'll say we're not. 
Why don't you take the controls and keep her as she is? We headed for the planet Saturn. Yes, sir. <laughs> Aldar, you will not save Prince Talon by accepting Kane's terms. Once he's here on Saturn, he will kill your prince and enslave your people. Gentlemen, you're dealing with the vilest type of crime known to man. Kidnapping. Why, we've fought it on Earth for centuries. Men capable of such a crime are without honor. Their words are worthless. And Killer Kane is the foulest of the lot. Why, your own experience with him should tell you that I speak the truth. Surely you must see that a treaty with Killer Kane will result only in your prince's death and the subjugation of your people. May I, who first suggested surrender, now withdraw my plea. Let us abide by our treaty with the people of the Hidden City and fight Killer Kane. And you? I, too, cast my vote for war. Both of Rogers, send the plane down once, Clay. Air control. Air control. All planes assigned to battle plan B take off immediately. Captain Rankin. All planes assigned to battle plan B are to take off immediately. All planes assigned to battle plan B take off immediately. single ship on Kane's private airfield. and have Crinkle sent up here. Crinkle? That's right. Go on. Hey, Warguard! Send Crinkle up here. Crinkle. Balcony. Move! and turn them against Kane. Put this back on again. It's harmless now. Then go down and remove the helmets from the others. You got that? That'll be a real pleasure. Fine.
take care of it. All right, I'll save a nice one for Kate himself. A crinkle, lead the way. Go on, bud. Now that we know the secret entrance to the hidden city, we must destroy it immediately. I will send all air squadrons against it tomorrow. All right. You will command the infantry that will follow in after the air attack. Yes, sir. Calling the leader Kane. Calling the leader Kane. Calling the leader Kane. We've been attacked by hidden city planes and fours. I've already lost a third of my ships. Commander White. Commander White. There's no time to lose. We must attack hidden city immediately. It means that you're through, King. Buddy. Quick, hold him. No! No! And that, my friends, finishes the story of Killer Kane, the man who wanted to conquer the world. No less ruthless, no less cunning, no less a danger to civilization than the very real enemy that threatens the world today. Let us hope that the scientists of the free world will devise the weapons and the craft that will make democracy invincible against any enemy. God bless America. that killer Kane got what he deserved a taste of his own medicine right Alice it's a saying Alice there was no medicine I know he didn't taste any medicine or anything like that it's a saying basically at the end Buck Rogers put the helmet on killer Kane and killer Kane became basically a robot zombie and didn't remember anything which is good because he does not know where the hidden city is now aha but alice this movie you picked out planet outlaws it is time to rank review and so forth what do you give this film out of 10 shovels nine nine shovels out of 10. Oh, if it had... Oh, boy, here we go again. If it, if the movie had Belly, Bella Lugosi in it, you would give it a 9.5. Not a 10? Oh, because they're cl very, very close in handsomeness. Oh, boy. Wow. All right, well, I'm going to go now with that, with the reviewing and ranking, and I'm going to tell you what I liked and disliked. Here. Don't worry, I have time, Alice. Oh. First, what I didn't like, I the editing was blah, but Alice did say that it was chopped up from um, 1939 to make a feature film in 1953. So that's understandable, that's I guess. Um, I had to laugh at some of the special effects. I mean, I know it was a long time ago, but it, that's probably why I've never been a big fan of sci-fi from the, the older times because it's really tough to make it look good like when the plane landed it just kind of like I don't know I'm being picky Alice says oh boy here we go but some of the things that I liked Alice was obviously Buster who played Buck Rogers did a very 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 good job very good job probably one of the highlights of the film and i did like how when it would show um a shot of like the cities and stuff like that that looked pretty pretty cool as well pretty neat but alice don't get too mad at me 
like I said, I'm not the biggest sci-fi fan, especially when it comes to like outer space films. I am going to give this a 6.5 out of 10 shovels. Alice says I'm mean. Nope, I'm just I'm just being honest. I'm not the biggest sci-fi fan. She's like, oh, you don't know a good movie when you see it. Well, this movie was okay, Alice. 6.5, you could have got a lot worse ranking. But we've come to the end of the film, Alice. And this is where Alice usually picks a cartoon to show at the end of the film. So if the movie scared you or bad taste in your mouth or whatever... But Alice has really been picking a lot of the feature films lately, so I figured it's only fair that I get to pick what we play at the end of the show. And I think, Alice, you'll enjoy it. I think people out there in TV land will enjoy it as well. But I hope you liked the feature film. And if you didn't, it's Alice's fault. I'm I'm just kidding, Alice. Well, it kind of is. She picked it. But we have come to the end of the show. So, for myself... Oliver, the caretaker Collins, my lovely co-host Alice, the queen of shenanigans, and her trusty is always Cat Bubbles. We hope you enjoyed the show, and we cannot wait to see you again. again, don't I? Well, as a matter of fact, I like to do some talking. Don't go away until I get this thing off. Now, it isn't as if it was a chore for me to talk to you because I want to speak on my favorite subject, the Army Air Forces. I can't speak from long experience. I've only been on the service a year, but I've learned a lot about what the Air Forces have to offer. That's what I want to talk to you about. Right now, the greatest mass mobilization in the history of the world is taking place. Men from cities, towns, farms, married men and single men, brothers, sweethearts, husbands, fathers and sons, businessmen and workers from the factories, and students from colleges and high schools all over America. They're mobilizing, joining up, or having their numbers pulled out of the fishbowl. And this war we're fighting today and tomorrow and the next day until we win is a war of the air. The whole world knows that. Our factories know that. So, interceptors, pursuit ships, light bombers, medium bombers, and flying fortresses are rolling out of those factories. 65,000 fighting planes this year. 100,000 fighting planes next year. And to keep them flying, 2 million men. Now, now that's where you come in. The Army Air Forces need 15,000 captains, 40,000 lieutenants, 35,000 flying sergeants. Well, how about it? Well, let's talk it over. 
Now, make no mistake about this thing, fellas. We're all going to be in this war soon, sooner than a lot of you realize. And nearly all the officers of this great Army Air Force that they're building today are going to be drawn from the ranks of you men, from high schools and colleges, those who join as aviation cadets now. Uh, well, now, before I go any further, are there any questions? Yes, yeah, sure, I've got a question. Okay, shoot. Well, I'd like to join up. But I've got about a year of college left, and I'd kind of like to get that diploma. Well, why not? The Air Forces want you to get your diploma. Fellows like yourself, either in high school or college, can enroll in the Air Force Reserve, continue with your studies, and at the end of the term, or when you get your diploma, you'll be taken in as a regular cadet, if you pledge now. Well, thanks. Okay, don't mention it. Hey, I'd like to make the Air Force, but I'm no brainstorm. My grades aren't exactly what they should be. I hear it's tough to get in. Not anymore, it is. And uh, that blocked letter you're sporting, that tells me a lot. Basketball, football, baseball, or some activity where coordination, control, and the ability to work together with the rest of the team, that's, that's important. The same in the Air Force. They're one big team, and they need men who can pull together and play the game. So, you and your teammates should be a cinch, and this is the biggest all-American team we ever had. Now, here's a fellow who works in a filling station. I, he looks so he's got something special on his mind. Say, uh, how about it, fellow? You know, I've been interested in the Air Forces for quite a while. But I'm 26 years old and got a wife. And I haven't had a chance for too much education. What about me? Well, from where I'm standing, you look like you're ready to sprout wings any minute. You see, formal education is no longer a basis for determining a man's intelligence in the Air Forces. And married or not, you'll receive $75 each month while training, and board and lodging, and all the necessary uniforms and equipment. And you have as much chance as the next fellow of becoming one of those 15,000 captains and 40,000 lieutenants or 35,000 flying sergeants I was telling you about. Yeah? Say, that sounds great. I think I'll go and phone my wife. I'd like to get something straight in my mind. I'm one of those high school students you've been talking about, but I'm not old enough. I wasn't planning on going to college, so well, where does that leave me as far as the Air Force is concerned? Well, you sound like the forgotten man. But if you're close to 18 and you're over five feet in altitude, you can be one of us just as quickly as anybody else. Okay. Just make out that application for the Air Force Reserve. Now, your physical examination. Well, that's not going to be so tough. If you're an average guy and normally healthy, you know, you'll make the grade, all right? So one day you say goodbye to mother and dad. Yeah, pretty proud and happy, too. Especially dad. His suspenders are about to bust. Yeah, you say goodbye to sister Jane and maybe Aunt Minnie. Oh, yeah. Uncle Ben, and Brother Joy. Those first few steps down the walk are the beginning of a great adventure. Oh, uh, wait, just wait a minute now. Uh, aren't gonna forget that sweet little bit of something next door. And you're on the train with a lot of other fellas. Probably many from your own school or neighborhood. Oh, yeah, I forgot to say, Uncle Sam bought your ticket. And your destination reads any one of a number of reception centers, maybe in California, maybe down in Texas. It's here that lasting friendships are made because you and your teammates are aiming for the same goal, that big, beautiful, wonderful V that spells victory. And now it begins. Now, here's a sort of a composite picture of what happens to you in the first few weeks of your aviation cadet training. Uh, you find your room, meet your roommate, get a haircut, army style, and try on a new pair of shoes and a new uniform that really fits. And time to eat. Those shops are on the fire. Eat with a few hundred other guys just as hungry as you are. In ground school, officers with years of experience patiently explain what makes them fly. And then one day, when class is over, you get all rigged out in what the well-dressed birdman will wear. You feel like quite a guy as you meet your flying instructor. But always in your memory will be the thrill of that first beautiful morning when you took off for the first time. Now, uh, 
Uh, what you're going to see next isn't considered exactly a part of the regular training course. But you're a chump if you don't include it in your curriculum. And you find out the effect those shiny little wings have on a gal. And it's phenomenal. Mr. Take the Air. And he did. Well, time has marched on. And here you are, cruising along in a BT. That's basic trainer to you. And twisting your tail into a few acrobatics and loops and barrel rolls and snap rolls. That's uh, some fun, huh? And a few more weeks roll by. You find yourself in still another plane. An advanced trainer this time. Yes, indeed. You're really getting up in the world at the rate of nearly 200 miles an hour. But you think this is something? Well, now, just wait. Fellas, shake hands with Mr. B-17 and a few of his big brothers. Now, watch out now. He's tough. Those four motors roaring through the sky like a thunderstorm. They can't fool with them. American workmen, the finest master mechanics in the world, put those motors together. Made them live, made them breathe, made them roar. There are a whole army of workmen, designers, engineers, and just plain guys who wanted to do something for their country. They put that B-17 together. A few thousand of these babies will win this war for us. And a few thousand guys like you in there flying. And remember, we said something about a team. Well, nine men are inside that plane, each with an important job to do. So let's go and take a look around. Let's meet the team. Yes, sir, nine fellas like yourself working together as closely coordinated as a precision watch. Now get this straight. The pilot is not the most important fellow inside this plane. All nine members of the crew are equally important. For example, the pilot and the co-pilot can take the plane off the ground and set it back down again, but where would they be without the navigator? Now meet him. He's the gentleman sitting right there. His pencils, calculators, He's responsible for getting the giant bomber to its destination and back again. Now, you might like his job. Now, this fellow's a second lieutenant, draws $245 each month, and although he was good at mathematics, he, he didn't graduate from college. But he learned that the Air Forces could use his talents. And now he's a necessary part of the team. And now let's go up into the nose of Mr. B-17 and meet somebody who has an important job in that department. This is the bombardier, the boy who doesn't miss. You see, flying the plane is wasted motion unless this lad hits the target on the noggin. The finest pilots in the Air Force would be behind the eight ball if the bombardier couldn't hit straight. And he's a full-fledged commission officer, too, wears his wings, draws the same pay as the pilot or the co-pilot. Now, back in the main body of the plane, we've got some more important positions. This fellow is the number one engineer. He keeps the motors turning and the thousands of working parts all through the bomber inspected and in repair. And then comes the radio operator who keeps the bomber in constant communication with its home base. And the photographer who keeps a photographic record of what takes place on the earth below while the bomber's on its mission. He's sort of an official scorekeeper checking up for future reference. Now the remaining members of the flight crew are number two engineer and number two radio man. So you see, being in the Air Forces isn't all piloting, or all navigating, or all bombardering. It's teamwork. And each member of the team is just as important as the next one. Now listen, it takes 38 men on the ground to keep this bomber in the air. So let, let's go downstairs and meet the ground force. Jobs, why there's one to fit every kind of fellow who wants to play on this all-American team. Meet the armament officer. Now, he's in charge of 12 bombers, more or less like the one we just looked over. It's his job to see that the bombs are loaded and the machine guns and a general all-around checkup. See that bar on his shoulders? Uh, he ranks just the same as the pilot or the co-pilot or the navigator or the bombardier. And to get this fellow's commission, a little engineering or physics in college would be a great help. Start flying well after departure. And there's a fellow whose job takes a back seat to nobody, the communications officer. 
those bombing and fighting planes up there, they depend on his work. He's part of the team. And how does a fellow get a sign like that on his door? Well, engineering officer Captain C.D. Burns had three years of college. He studied aerodynamics, and those qualifications quickly awarded him his commission. He's in charge of all mechanical details and has a full crew of technically trained enlisted men to supervise. Now, another opportunity for you specially minded fellows is to be a meteorologist. If you do, you'll be assigned to a post where all military missions will be guided by your reports. Yep, and you'll get those gold bars, all right, after 30 weeks free training in some leading technological institute. Photographers and chemists. Now, well, there's a spot for you on the team in charge of one of the hundreds of fixed or mobile photographic laboratories the Air Force must have. Now, this job, too, gets you a commission as an officer. So, whether you're flying a plane as a pilot or a co-pilot, charting its course as a navigator, acting as bombardier, or in any one of the many technical jobs in the air or on the ground, wherever it is in the United States Army Air Forces, you're part of a team. Now, remember that. Now listen to the roar of those motors, young men of America, and heed their call. Soon the skies will be filled with the greatest air armada the world has ever seen. Our own Army Air Forces. The best planes ever built. 65,000 planes this year, 100,000 more next year. That's why we'll lick the Axis, and that's how we'll lick the Axis. Your commission in the Air Forces is waiting. You don't have to have a diploma to become an officer. Join now on the enlistment reserve basis and then finish your present school or college term before you're called upon for actual duty. If you're between the ages of 18 and 26 with a good bill of health, you can make as high as $245 a month and with a bonus of $500 for each year of service in the Air Forces. Or if you become one of those 15,000 captains we need right away, you'll receive $430 a month while you serve your country. And you'll be well trained for a good job in civilian life when this war is won. Now, here's another thing. Now, it's kind of hard to explain, but believe you me, it's important. You see, while you're getting all this wonderful technical training in the Air Forces, you're learning about other things, too. Things that are going to pay off in big dividends. You're learning to be alert. You're learning how to handle men and how to do that job with a lot of pride. Yeah, you're learning about courage, too. But you'll know what I mean, and I hope soon, because the Air Forces are proud to think that you might be with them. And by the time you finish your training, America will have overwhelming superiority in the air. You see, the way the Air Forces feel about it, they're fighting and they're flying for the safety of our people at home, our mothers and fathers and our sisters and brothers. And to keep the terrible war of destruction that swept Poland and Belgium and Holland and blasted homes of good people in London and Coventry and maimed hundreds of innocent women and children in Nanking and Burma and Bataan Peninsula and Pearl Harbor. To keep that war from our own shores, our cities and our homes. The roar of a hundred thousand motors sing their song. And theirs is a song of freedom and their wings outstretched in the cause of decency. And each spinning prop drones in vengeance against those who would destroy our way of life. But somebody's got to fly it. A lot of somebody's have got to fly it. Now, this is your place. This is where you'll serve America best. Young men of America, your future's in the sky. Your wings are waiting.